We are back with the Summer Tour for Division 1 in Eastern Europe. Team Spirit, one game away now of booking their ticket to the Bali Major. And if they're able to have a repeat performance like that, I can imagine it's going to happen eventually in this series with how dominant they looked. And we just saw it was a bit of a wonky draft out of the boys on one move. I mean, they were keeping pace for, for quite some time, but towards the kind of mid-game, we saw it all came crashing down, didn't we? We did, and it's not like Spirit were perfect either, right? We, we saw a number of times where they were just uh, isolated, separated away from the team when they truly achieved this, this death ball status of Underlord having all the auras you could possibly want, uh, Storm, uh, Sven being perfectly healthy to be able to farm with the god strength, and yeah, maybe just overvaluing the, the Fiend's Gate or maybe not uh, communicating it effectively enough to be able to you know work together as a team. So I think one move they need to not outdraft themselves to be able to start with, and again, just up the tempo. Don't let Team Spirit get Yataro to this uh, stage where no one's going to be able to keep up with him in a farm because he is just next level. It is indeed. Team and, oh, Spirit second draft underway. Maybe one move to start off back in no the techies for them. The I, I wasn't. Again from... Yeah, it, it would be fine. I'm not crazy about the Panto techies. I, I prefer the way that Gilgir likes to play it. You know, I feel like Panto might have given his life up for free a few too many times when, you know, you are able to dish out some pretty consistent Five damage from afar remaining. just with those sticky bombs in the middle of fights and then really wait for the the opening to, to jump in, lay down all those proximity mines for the big uh, magic resistance reduction explosion. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what they, they have to do this time. Maybe they just wanted something that was really reliable along with the Ember Spirit to be able to play with for pickoffs and... You have to say that Ankarad and Gilgit played pretty well around each other in that regard. It's just that they already kind of had a hero that you could have done that with. So, you know, it is what it is. Team Spirits, turn it is. Bad Rider. It's going to be the Okay, so this is another route they've gone down a lot recently for Spirit, where there's a lot of flex with the Batrider. Mira's been spamming it in pubs. We've seen him play it a lot so far in the um, summer tour as well and we've even seen Lyle play it as well I think he actually had a, a pretty decent game in the game one versus Bet Boom when, when he was playing the Batrider so uh, again it looks like they're, they're really favoring picking Five his hero remaining. up early on it is Team Spirit that have the second pick overall though and I would have to say that for a team with second pick that have the level of flexibility that Spirit do I'd be ecstatic with these picks, right? Like Spirit Breaker can go three, four, five. Bat Rider can go two, three, four in this sort of game, and you can make it work, right? So Team Spirit, they're probably going to look to pick up their, I would assume, position five with the next pick of the overall draft, and then just, you know, make it work. Basically, they'll probably go into a Lich again if they give them the opportunity to. Feels like a okay to me. Toss that frost shield onto Spirit Breaker once he's got the Aghanim Shard, and what can you do? I mean, they, they co-op, so it's probably not going to be a Batrider mid, but again, they've got the ability to just make it a position 3 or a position 4, and then you just pick something that's able to punish the co-op. They, they get plenty of opportunities, though, to be able to ban out some of the bigger counters to co-op, like the Puck, for example. Lena used to be one, but obviously not so much anymore. And anyone else that's able to just outrange the Quop as well. Uh, even Invoker we've seen as a pretty decent response to the Quop just because of, you know, having the Quas for the laning stage. And then once that's over, pretty decent lockdown with the uh, with the Cold Snap to be able to find that quick pick off. Team Spirits, turn to ban. But with like you were saying though, the and your suggestions of mid lane is it is more than likely going to push the Bat Rider over to a support. Um, uh -huh. Another thing is that it was a it while could be ago, lane. but... Could be a collapse, Bat Rider. Ten seconds remaining. Yep, that's true. That's true. Um, so we'll, we'll see what route remaining. they want to go down for Spirit. Like you said, though, more than likely we're going to be looking at a Postgres hero to get picked Dire up at the 15th. Back. So again, Lich is really the one that comes to mind with how much we've seen Team Spirit um, pick it up so ban. far. So I wonder if... Surely they're not going to use all of their second phase on position five bans. Wouldn't be surprised. I mean, the... I feel like Spirit should get rid of the Slark for one. You know, even if the Batrider was being played Ten as a position four, remaining. still fine against it. And against a Spirit Breaker, melee uh, offlane, assuming Five that is how they want to do it, feels good as well. 
and it's something that's able to play aggressive. So I think it just ticks all the boxes that one move needs to be accomplishing in this uh, in this game if they're looking to find any form of success. What's another option that they could be thinking about? PL, I guess, but not really fast tempo, but does a decent job against the bat and the SP. I feel like these bands will really reveal a lot. Like the spirit bands? Yeah. Or the... As to like what where who's playing what role, basically. Like Bat Rider 3 versus Bat Rider 4, Spirit Breaker 3 versus Spirit Breaker 4 or 5. That they could be looking to go for. They're taking a long time again, but I mean last time I thought they were taking a while and then they yeah, uh, through that curveball at the very end. I mean, always having the last pick overall is going to give you the advantage, but you just got to give... This is probably where Yatoro wants to be talking a lot, right? Because he his pick carried the game for uh, for Team Spirit last time around. And he's like, all right, I know I'm going to have great global presence with Batrider and Spirit Breaker, great pickoff style. What's that going to enable me to do? Is that enabling me to farm, or do I want to match that sort of tempo? And what heroes does one move have that are going to be able to prevent me from doing that? So, Faceless Void... I you think he should be speaking now? I feel like his pick's going to be lost. The only sure, but is... like, you, you, your, your win condition does need to be picked on the back of like what is enabling it to be the win condition. So it's like, does he want to play an aggressive game against Five these heroes or does he want to play a farming game against these heroes? I would wager he wants to play a bit more of a farming game just because they don't necessarily do the greatest job at invading on their own. And if you do, you need to commit quite heavily with like lots of high cooldown ultimates. Like the Quap ulti is still fairly long and you might not even get the kill just because of a spirit break we're able to you know charge from the other side of the map to join you. So maybe something like the Terror Blade they're considering. Um, it's not amazing against the techies but it does mean that it is one of those heroes that faceless void can look to kill right so i feel like that makes you feel relatively happy yep. the void ban also protects the bat rider i mean it's mm -hmm. like you said i mean you're gonna try and avoid the queen of pain versus bat rider matchup so putting him down Team in the off lane regardless if it's bat. a three or a four the uh the carry void's always gonna have a very good matchup for versus the bat rider so we're able yep. to protect that at least. Time dilation is such a good spell against the bat. Even just the one point super value means that that high movement speed on bat really doesn't feel Ten all that impactful. Remaining. Five seconds remaining. See, what's the call going to be? One move again. Another support's going to get banned out. Will be the pugna. So Slitch is still there if they want to go down that route once again, but looking to get rid of the Pain medic and the, the story. To pick. Shadow Demon Ban. This Might be that Terror Blade Dusa? still that they're looking to go for. Deuce or TB. I guess if that's the, the idea, then something like a Slark really doesn't do much against a TB as well, oh. so maybe they're Ten like, alright, go on, pick remaining. Slark. We'll, we'll just TB against you. I guess also, I mean, Shadow Demon was Five one of the better supports remaining. versus Spirit Breaker. Um, when Perch just completely ruins his game. So Dying. potentially if this is going to be Collapse playing the Spirit Breaker, <sighs> even the save as well with Banishment's very nice. I think Batrider nowadays plays off the back of Lasso, and that's a big reason why we see him as a support just through his early game and, and mid game. Overall, his team fighting, it's just blank initiate with Lasso. So that's where the Banishment's able to come into play. So it's a pretty good Oracle game. Thanks. 10 seconds already remaining. like for the same sort of things right you just fortune's end on the spirit breaker gets rid of the bulldoze you could stop the the lasso with your false promise you get rid of the frost shield as well i think it could work yeah well that, that seemed like it. i didn't watch game two and game three of bet boom vs spirit but we saw spirit in both those drafts they first phase of lich and the response from bet boom was the oracle in both those games so i have to imagine it's their response to lich and like you said there's a lot of other value that that hero would provide against the breaker and the bat rider too so i did it all for one move feels like a panto style of hero as well like he he is in my opinion he thrives on the more defensive ones you know your undyings your shadow demon the oracle find it kind of fits the same sort of mold to me they're gonna need to make their decision quickly just five seconds left dire team pick timber saw Okay. Timber into bat. Is it a... I mean... 
I guess you're probably not leaning into it, so you feel like it's okay, but yeah. That's... Super into that feels a little odd. Well, Early now Lotus builder, at least. Remaining. That's true. Uh, bumps up the value on Batrider Core now. Five seconds if that remaining. is something you want to consider. Maybe now you're like, alright, we could just cop the bad matchup versus the Quap. Because you get high levels, you're able to rotate to the Timbers slark. lane. Now you're going to a Slark as well. So, see, I like the back and forth we have in this draft. Pretty rare uh, that you're leaving your support until last, though, right? Like, how many supports are even left this game to be able to play? Oracle stands like a, like a sore thumb Ten to me. Remaining. Uh, I mean, the thing is... Uh, Five seconds remaining. Can you Lesh? I know Lesh isn't really meta these days, but it's not bad against Timber. It's not bad against Quap, and it's not bad against Slark. All of that AoE damage. And you're going to have a little bit of safety with the, the Lich as well. Dire team ban. Juggernaut. Ooh. Good job. You know, I love a Yatoro Juggernaut. Always exciting to see. I think he's still 100% on the hero team as well. Spirits, it's like 6-0 or something. Yeah, something like that. 6-0, 5-0. I can't remember what, what it is, but he's hmm. thriving on the Juggernaut. I mean, I will say versus Slark, at least... It can be a bit frustrating with the Shadow Dance and with the, the Depth Shroud as well. So that's one thing. Ten but seconds this could be a pretty difficult lane for a Timber. I haven't seen this in in a long time. Five but seconds Jug Lich remaining. is a very, very rough lane to play into. A lot of kill threat. Uh, and Dire high magic damage back. early can be a bit of a nuisance for the Timber Saw. So we shall can, see that Oracle. He's back. obviously going to have the Timber Chain, you know, leveled up. It's just four seconds. So pretty rare that you're going to be caught in a position. Like, I think if he Timber Chains mm. towards the Juggernaut makes things a little bit more challenging i think if you go one zero one the lich then 10 seconds remaining it, yeah I then guess. like it's what, very you, like interrupt in mid chain or something yeah yeah remaining. and then it's put on cooldown four Spirits seconds is plenty I and mean, that's all blade ban. fury duration so so sure like level one but i think they should be able to address that as the levels go on man they are really looking to enable this quap now off the back of these last two bands puck and dk i mean quap just can't kill the dk and puck forces you to go into an earlier BKB Ten when it's really your Aghanim Scepter that you're looking to try and rush on the Queen of Pain. So Five to me, I still think this is a pretty decent Invoker game. You know, you can use the Lasso with Sunstrike to be able to get kills. You can use Spirit Breaker Charge with Sunstrike to get kills. You can use Sinister Gaze to get kills. You can, you know, buff up your Juggernaut with Alacrity. You do a great job against the Quap in lane. I think it's just really solid overall. And they get rid of the last offensive dispel that's left in this game which is the uh, the Enchantress support offensive dispel. Unless they go a plus five invoker, could happen. 10 seconds remaining. Trying to think of what one move need. Five seconds five brew. remaining. Five brew. Team spirit. Some control would be very, very much needed. I mean, it slows, feels nice. They are very lacking in Lockdown, lockdown, though. Yeah, plenty of slows, plenty of... Uh, not really sciences. They got a leash, they got a mini stun. Ten seconds That's about remaining. it. So, I mean... Five seconds remaining. Could they tinker? It's a pretty good tinker game. Dark. Dark. Damn. Your... Damn. So, so they're on. still running... Okay, mid -bat. The bat into the quap. Okay. Lyle must feel like it's okay. Well, I, I think it's just... The Slark matchup makes it awkward? Yeah, I think the Slark matchup, matchup makes it a little bit awkward, but I think there's a lot of value with it being a, a higher priority because you will... It is a very good matchup versus Timber. It doesn't matter if yeah. you're not playing the lane. It's your early damage that you can rotate early on. Once Timber's supposed to be unkillable, like... You know, six to eight, whenever, when he can play the lane solo, that's when Batrider is able to kill him. Like, that's the big thing. That's the same thing with the less track. That's why these two heroes play very well into Timber. Because when he's supposed to not die, they can Ten make you, they, he, they can kill him very early on. So, even though, I, even though this is a Queen of Pain favored Five matchup, Lyle's just like, all right, there's a lot of value with a call. Batrider this game, it's just, it's going to be nice enough. And, and we got a true, we got a clap Starks here as well. Any sort of big team fight late game hero, give me collapse on it because he will make it work. You know, just Tide Hunter, Mars, Magnus, Darkseer, 
and this is where he thrives you know screw the full aura building meta this is the the type of dota we want to see especially from team spirit i mean we've been talking about the bat rider matchup not doing amazingly against the quap but even if that doesn't happen if collapse makes a rotation if there is a team fight that breaks out you still got to have the surge to be able to enable your bat rider a little bit get the lasso drag him to the other side and find that quick pick off so i i prefer this one move draft to what they had in game number one i just feel like team spirit you've given them a lot of their signatures already yeah, which is going to be a, a big concern for them. So we'll see what one move we're able to do. Like we said, Spirit one game away of booking the ticket to the Bali Major. And for one move, with a loss here, they will be forced into potential tiebreak relegation uh, with Hydra. That could be a three-way tiebreaker definite, as well, yeah. depending on some other results as well. But yeah, definite tiebreaker will be going on with a loss in this series of one move. So their fate is in their hands. It all starts with this game. First, a word from our sponsor, EGB. Bets on esports, bets on streamers, impressive bonus system, welcome bonus up to $600, cashback, artifacts, regular promotions, daily giveaways, try yourself as a bookmaker, great lines, egb.com, more than just a bookmaker. Makes it all worthwhile, you took the bait. Alright Oracle, I once again you know, our, our turn banned. to you. No, no, no. Denog, Denog is not banned. Denog the Oracle. Not banned. Quick look at the uh, EGB odds again. No surprise no about it favoring Team Spirit. But yeah. maybe for you, you could uh, help people's channel points. Their predictions. Where are where, where we leaning this one? You said you did pref you liked this one move draft over their previous one. Do you like it enough, though, to favor them versus what Spirit have? I'm just going through it lane by lane, right? I feel like the Slark Venno should be a fine lane against this dual melee. Um, well, probably a, a really good one. The downside to that is that the Slark and the Venno don't really clear creeps out very well, so you might hit some earlier level timings on the, the Darkseer and Spirit Breaker and get a kill off the back of that that they're not quite expecting. Uh, mid lane, I'm preferring the Quop over the Batrider, and the off lane. It really is just going to come down to Maposhka and how quick he is on the fingers with the Sinister Gaze. So I think they've got all the tools to be able to have a really solid start to this game on one move. My question just comes with how are they going to be able to close it out. And uh, you know what? Screw it. We're going to a game three. What? Just because you just saw that first blood? No, because Spirit have gone to a th game three in every single series up until now. Okay. So the trend will continue. Nox says, and first blood will definitely help out. Looks like it's going to be two for two in regards to the bounties as well. So, I mean, I think Mine, right? let, let's go through. I, as, I mean, you mentioned what you you feel like the the lanes are going to be able to shape up. It's actually top lane. This is going to be an action-filled lane. I mean, you. Yes. This is, is not a farm fest. Like, there's there's yeah. going to be action everywhere. Probably more so the side lanes. Mid lane's much more about Lyle just living and getting any sort of uh, experience off the back of this quite rough lane. But uh, yeah, top side especially. I'm having a constant look at like who has the level advantage right now. We were talking about... Oh, actually, Clips onto Collapse there. So just level one, they don't have that extra little burst of damage to be able to, to counter this one out. But I mean, Venno against two melee, Slark against two melee, you're very happy with that. The sort of lane that I want to see Panto like get his level two, but then, you know, spend the rest of his time harassing. It doesn't want to let the. Uh... You want to enable Mukushi as much as possible. He's got pounce available. Might be able to get another kill up here. Perhaps is almost out of. Uh, um... HP. <laughs> oh, that bash! Are you Seventeen percent. And he missed out on like two creep last hits while that was all happening because this pull was allowed to happen. And now you do get your level two probably on Collapse and Mirror. So don't need to just rely on the bash anymore. You'll have to charge through too. See how the action is going to continue up top. Mirror bottom lane, the level two is like we were speaking about. He still hasn't put a level into anything else just yet, so holding out an extra skill point for the moment. Looks like also just touching on mid lane. Looks like Loz having a pretty good time as well. 
and six compared to the seven and three. If the matchup is playable. It's definitely going to be how you're able to. It's a, a lot of individual plays, and if you're able to, and outperform the uh, the opposition, looks like well, definitely doing that at the moment. This really isn't one of the lanes where you want to be. Before. Has to be a little careful. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. Oh, is done. And Mim on the opposite side of that, we got some kills collapse. Now we get paired to Mimo to the tower. Moon Kushi is okay though, with everything used. Not enough mana for collapse nor mirror to be able to continue to play aggressive, but that kill is going to be nice for them. Gives collapse almost enough gold for the ring of health. He's got it. He does. I'm a little surprised that he was so quick to use the ion shell. He actually doesn't have any mana to be able to play around with, so Moon Kushi, if he quickly joins, would probably have been able to get a kill onto him. But he just doesn't give him over the Lotus just yet, but gives him a Tango to be able to play around with. Uh, yeah, he used the next Ion Shell before he was level 3, so he still had the uh, the lesser effectiveness out of it. Well, he thought they could have potentially made a bit more of an aggressive move onto the Slark. I'm still doing a fairly good job on this top lane, though. Top of the net worth. Not really being harassed as much as I was expecting, and of course that kill that he was able to claim for Panto. Might be in a little bit of trouble here, though. Looks like he will be in a lot of trouble. No, still going to go down. Now Mira as well. Death. Oh, so we'll escape. This gives him a, a lot of time to be able to work on the lane now. Munkushi is going to be able to get solo experience. See Panto instantly leaving him alone. Probably we might look for a half pull from the Venomancer. Not going to look for a full pull. Maposhka nearly got that uh, that sinister gaze that we were talking about on the bottom side. It was just some some game in beta magic that uh, made sure that the timber saw still got away with the timber chain. But they're making the right sort of plays to be able to uh, to make the best out of these relatively rough lanes. I gotta say, Spirit Breaker, he's come back to the top lane, full HP, full mana. Just wondering. Collapse might be extending himself a little Dyer's bit too far. Has been a little bit of like bonus gold that you get off the back of things like career kills are going to be so valuable. No blood grenade to be able to play around with anymore. No venomous gale. Actually leveled up to two, which I don't hate. Oh, it triples the damage that it does off the back of just one additional point into it, which seems real value this game. How aggressive Collapse is playing. No ion shell onto Mirror either. Can't really go for this dive underneath the tower. I, I guess one thing with the the spirit breaker, like the spirit breaker dark seed lean, it means that you're never going to get stacks inside the jungle, which would be really nice for a lot. Looks like he's actually made his own. He's got a a quad stack, I think, inside the jungle. So I mean, that's huge for Lol, considering his eight, 19 and six compared to the 26 and 15. So at least he's been able to increase his own net worth. But that was really the, the concern I wanted to highlight that this is a very different game where we saw Spirit in game one, like both Miriam and Poshka putting a lot of emphasis on stacks, but and at least top lane in particular, Mira's going to have a lot of difficulties with doing that. Yeah. Also see, Poshka's helping out a little bit with some small stacks here and there. Able to maybe get a kill onto the techies, but well, he's actually even going to keep the illusion rune there and available for Anchorat. This techie's made a few stacks of his own. You gotta say though, like I was expecting these lanes to probably go a little bit better than they have for uh, for one move. You know, Quop still top of the net worth for the cause, and Bat still at the bottom, but he's made it work, right? This is the answer that I always have. You know, what do you do if it's a rough lane? You don't lane. You make it work somehow else. You either, you know, cut the lane from behind, you build up stacks for yourself, you pull the wave, do something. And uh, Lyle's done exactly that. So he's keeping up. He's already, he's actually ahead in terms of experience compared to the Quop. Ooh, Poshka. Is Cookie going in? Oh, okay. <laughs> Poshka I mean, gets a solo timing, kill. No way. No. Ten seconds. Oh, he, I don't believe he got scouted out. Great pathing as well. So that I'm sure they have a good idea, but they don't have confirmation. So no one's going to TP for that. Probably going to be God. double wisdom room. Goes to the wave spirit. Yep. Uh, Gilgi's actually top lane. So, should be able to get some kills, although Mira wants to charge in. We'll find the one in Phantom. It's still pretty strong with the Iron Shell. There's Lotus and six charges, but doesn't get either of them off. And, and Meeple, I didn't... Level six. 
Ah, uh, he, he died to a neutral creep. I was thinking he might have TP'd back, but just wanting to keep that TP available for the lane, I suppose. He's just got enough for the Cornucopia as well. Sending it out to himself. Taking a little bit more of a, a scenic route. Seems. Not wanting to walk it through any sort of vision that one move might have looked to set up. Look at how much emphasis they're putting on this mid lane. There's a really deep observer ward. They're trying to get a kill onto the pop, though. Range for the Lasso? Oh, oh, now Ant Grab with the long range Sonic Way. Beautifully done. Kill Gear, great position. He's able to give enough time for the jump away, and then Ant Grab still close enough to get the turn around there. He'll get the D Ward as well, along with securing the rune for Ant Grab. He's not even done just yet. Wanted to continue to poke, but Poshka. Of course, Mirror's nearby to offer some assistance, but four points in the dagger. That's a lot of damage, but Poshka. Incredibly low, already wants to go back to base. It's a lot of damage and it's a lot of sustain, more importantly. You know, like, you are able to go for these deeper dives, even at this super early point of the game, just off the back of that maxed out Shadow Strike, and it's not going to come back to bite you. That's what I love about the new Agonims. You know, he hasn't got a single point in the Scream of Pain. And Cred's job this game is very simple. Just make sure that the Bat Rider does not have that really good start, and he doesn't have the ability to stop Afterlife from just. Radiance playing what is a pretty is decent attack. Timbersaw game, right? All it really needs to be concerned about is the Bat Rider and the Juggernaut. 3,000 net worth lead at 9 minutes in. Definitely start that one move we're hoping for. They might even be able to get the kill into Collapsed top lane. Hans is on the mark from Rimmer and Kushi. Collapse actually wanted to try and stand his ground and fire with the vacuum back in on the wall. Should be able to chase down. Now they want to go for Munkushi as well with Mira showing up. Well, it's a little bit more difficult of a task for the Shadow Dance at the ready. Now, they're going to be cautious, though. It's a wraparound starting to occur from Gil Gear, but it looks like Lapsus Cory is going to scout him out. Mirror's level six, 6 as already. well, off the back of that, uh, well, the Stolen Wisdom rune, right? Helps out. Yeah. Raposhka, too. Mm -hmm. No one really that can defend this bottom tower, though. Raposhka, he's playing around mid. A little bit more, Radiant's realizing that that's where Ankrad still attack. wants to stay for the next little bit of time. He's got the uh, the Witchblade coming out to him as well, so even more slows to be able to counter out what this Spirit Breaker and Bat Rider are able to do. Chain Frost mid lane, chain Frost Oshka. in that mid lane. Well, well, Mira is in a little bit charge. of trouble. Another turn to the Spirit Breaker. It's going to be a one for one. They'd love to get the Essence stack over to Moon Kushi. It's like they'll enable that. Meanwhile, Ankrad was also able to assassinate. Secondary support on Spirit. Now with the double damage rune and the catapult, this tower. Oh, that's going to go down even if they glyph it, I believe. Bottom lane, they're trying to set up on after... Oh, lol, just a little bit too late with the flame break. That would have been a huge kill if they could slow down this Timbers game. Probably just going to go into the wind lace now after this for that little bit of extra value from the movement speed. I'm going to try and chase down this Timbersaur and... They did still pop that glyph in the mid lane, but Ankred, once again, just soaking up a lot of the damage. Will he die off the back of this? They've got the... Oh. How did he get that blink off? I thought I Lyle know. was on point. Well, they'll go for the lasso this time onto Gil... He's... Oh, yikers. Broshka's wait and ready. Chain Frost still on cooldown, though, which is really the ultimate they need to turn this around. Is Mir... Wait, okay. what? He just walked into the Firefly. <laughs> Cloudy. I, I, honestly, I heard a bomb go off as soon as he died, so some I don't know how. I thought he died to his own minds, but yeah, no, he stood in Firefly for five seconds. <laughs> that'll uh, that'll do it too. What is this? Max yeah. out? Yeah, max out Firefly. Two on four builds. Just four hundred so. damage. Oh, I mean, honestly, that's a that's a pretty big kill. Two hundred eighty-five gold to to Batrider, considering how rough of a lane Lars had and his movement so far hasn't been able to connect. So. You'll take any little injection of gold you can get at the moment. Yep. I mean, this is just going to be another one of those games where they're like, yeah, throw, try and do it for us. But, I mean, they don't exactly have the, the greatest heroes to be able to kill, honestly, any, any of these cores, right? Like the Bat Rider, yes, for the Timber Sword. But it's going to be quite a while until he's able to get to that stage. Afterlife, he's had a pretty decent start to the game. He's going almost that full-on damage build as well from the offlane, considering he's been able to be kept solo for quite some time. So, still going to be in a good spot in terms of levels. They're trying to bait that bounty rune with Anchorette. Where's a big kill thing? Get it. 
No, I don't think they will. I think they might be happy enough with the Boschka, but I'm not sure if they're even going to get that. Torres push through pretty aggressively. We've got a glyph the creep to try and secure with the boots to travel in. Mira's got the ultimate salt to work with as well. Gilgir is at the ready though. Gets the cancel out, but the Omnish sacks down, bouncing around, but the damage, it's minimal at best. Your Toro now forced to TP out along with Mira. They'll both survive, but Lyle's game are continuing. It'll be rougher and rougher. Meanwhile, Mikushi's free farming top, shoving collapse out of the lane. Just be a little careful, was staying a bit close to some of these, but of course, he's a Slark. He's got that Shadow Dance available. He'll know that the charge is on him until... Uh, Shadowlands kicks back in. Yeah, this is kind of what I was expecting, right? Like, e even the Juggernaut, if Yato has an amazing game, what is he going to do against uh, Shadow Dance, Depth Shroud, Quop just blinking away from you, Timbersaw, if he's able to get into that beefy estate where he goes uh, probably a Lotus Orb after this uh, Kyron Sarge. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Feels like a pretty rough one for him to have to be able to play around with, and maybe it's going to rely on Collapse to be able to land those big vac walls in the middle of these team fights just to hold them in place. I, I, all right, I, can, I, can I call like a, a really late game Aghanim Scepter on Maposhka with a five-man vac wall into the five-man Sinister Gaze into a Chain Frost into an Omni Slash? Is he going to be able to get that farm though? That's a lot of farm on Maposhka. I have faith. You have faith? All right, well. The only sticker I've ever purchased. Sticker. Oh, there you go. 6k network lead is going to do that justice for EGB. Odds well and truly now in their favor. I really would like to see Spirit now trying to play with Collapse. The top of the network hero. He is their strongest hero at this stage of the game. Vanguard, Mech, very close to Greaves. But really, it's just the max out Iron Shell. That's a ridiculous amount of damage that they haven't been utilizing inside these previous skirmishes. So... I mean, now with Yutoro having Battle Fury, he's going to be left on the island. You're not going to look to rotate to him. Allow him just to continue farm. Puts your pressure on some other side lanes. Just to force one move to, to address that instead of maybe trying to hunt Yutoro. And I feel like you do need to make the most out of this timing on the Darkseer because of what I was talking about before with the Timbersaw, right? He's actually going for a Yule Scepter, so another way to be able to get an offensive dispel off. Not the, the Lotus Orb we were expecting. It's still fine. But because the Timber's gone this sort of build, there's no pipe, there's no mech, there's no even a glimmer cape. The, the most that they've got in terms of like damage reduction is a pavis on... Uh, well, actually, you've, you've got a mech on Gilgir, never mind. But still, a lot of that other stuff isn't quite there. So if you're able to get really big value out of these things, like that max down iron shell that you were talking about. The lane lol. Push the tier 2 towers, gonna try and play around with the lasso. It's not going to be enough, though. Still, Gilgi is going to be in some trouble with the double supports from Team Spirit, but they might just feed their own life away. It's Afterlife and Aincrab. They've got plenty of damage to so still continue on the chase. Over to the west side they go. Maposhka, take a spill. This game is really starting to get out of control. It is, and, I mean, Collapse even drops the, the Wall of Replica up top just because Munkushi made an aggressive attempt onto him. It becomes a whole lot more difficult now that you've got a level 12 Slark with that, uh, that Diffusal Blade picked up as well, just consistently going for these chase downs. They've already got plenty of uh, movement speed slows, but just the Diffusal Blade on top of that really limits the impact of this Batrider. I maybe... Oh, I, again? A little bit too late. Mira's still going to try and con continue with the charge. This so a couple so. times now, though, Dano. We, we saw, uh, to, to bring it up again, that yeah, exactly. first rotation we got out of Lal with the boots of travel bottom, where he just missed on the flame break to cancel off the chain away, and, and just then as well with the vacuum. The, the, those were really the only two opportunities they ever had to be able to kill the timber. And with them slipping away... Uh, that's a big reason why Afterlife is top of the net worth and getting to a stage where he's almost unkillable. I mean, Lotus Orb, he's uh, very difficult to bring down. Yeah. I'm glad that he went away from that Yule Scepter. Like, I don't think you're all that concerned about the aggressive dispels this game. Like, yes, it's good to be able to get rid of Surge and the Bulldoze and the uh, the Frost Shield, but I don't really think that a, a Quop or a Timbersaw really care about the majority of that stuff. They're just going to be able to continuously run at you because of this good start that they've had. So it's more about just enabling yourself to live that's going to be the, the higher priority. See if they can get Aincrad or is this a little bit too deep? Maybe they'll go for Gilgir instead. 
So a bit of a pep like in their step stage. now for Spirit. You know, after that one kill onto the Venomancer, they started to play very aggressively, sweeping to the jungle, dropping two wards down to help get a secondary kill. Very nicely done for them. So when they play from behind, they understand they do have a bit of a, a timing, bit of a strength to work with. That also helps them get the tier one tower as well. I mean, they're going to be praying that uh, Munkushi doesn't go back inside of his own jungle to farm because look at all of those Observer Wards. Like, one is being dealt with right now, oh, two well, are being both. dealt with just, yep, off the back of this gigantic... Uh, yeah, that's that's what that's the voice crazy. line's about. The the gigantic Sentry Range, that's one of my favourite ones to place. And they're even going to get a third, eventually, if uh, he ever does decide to come towards this mid lane, but... You don't really need to. You know, you've already taken the mid-tier 1 tower. Just keep playing around the side lanes. If you find a pick-off, maybe it's enough to get... Uh, it's not exactly the best Roche lineup, but you know, Kushi can certainly look to push out those side lanes very effectively off the back of a single pick. Well, now with those wards dying, though, right? Like, sp someone has to die on Spirit for, for them to farm. You, you, there were two f really freshly placed wards, and... You don't want it to be collapse. You really don't want it to be collapse, though. Let's see if the Greaves going to be enough. Helps out with some of the damage, but it will not matter. There's just way too much coming up from the four heroes nearby. Now Yatoro as well is going to be in some trouble with Afterlife stepping around, but a Blade Fury TP up. It's okay. He's lucky that no one had TP'd up to that tier 2 tower previously. Otherwise would have uh, would have been removed before it. I mean, even just with the slows, not able to get this, uh, this stack off where he's looking to make use out of that Battle Fury. Kushi just continuing to scale, continuing to excel, even without that Battle Fury. He's getting a lot of his farm off of hero kills with that Aghanim Scepter picked up, going into the Echo Saber next. He just wants to play around the rest of his team for now. Really just is like where you can get the farm on the map, and you've got, well, decent heroes at being able to find those sorts of pickoffs, right? You are going up against a Spirit Breaker charging in, you are going up against a Batrider who almost has Octarine, so Lal isn't doing horribly in terms of like the items that he's picking up but i just feel like what they have isn't necessarily the best toolkit to be able to deal with the uh, the one move courts supports they're, they're they're dealable but it doesn't take much for a veno to be able to have that high impact in a team fight you basically just need to gale and ult and you've done your job looking to find any pick up that they can though to that dive but might just give another s yeah. stack over uh, this is all on claps a pretty decent vacuum back with the Chain Frost. Not going to be able to bounce around, but the Lasso is there. Lotus Orb will reflect it, but it's not going to matter. Ancrad's able to get away. A solo Omni Slash helps them get the kill onto one, but it's a heavy committal from Spirit. And just They've to get the everything. tech is he's not going to feel great. They have used absolutely everything. Lasso, Chain Frost, Omni Slash, Wall. With the Spirit Breaker going down previously, there really isn't anything stopping them from just pushing into this mid lane. They've even got a Siege Creep to be able to play with. I think that was a regen rune that Ancrab was able to get as well. Like they needed any more luck to be able to play around with. And, well, now that he's got that uh, Scream of Pain maxed out, next item up for him, that Aghanim Scepter. They probably even afford to go a little bit separate here. Like if Ancrab wanted to push in bottom just to get two lanes uh, under the same sort of pressure, they probably could, but they're backing off wanting to get a quick pick off here onto Lal. Gear was just a little bit too early with his TP, so it meant that it took a little bit longer. Well, at least it does. Did, the worth, did the net worth decrease? Like, it, it feels like it was gone between 8 and 9k, and now it's 7 to 8k that uh, one move have as an advantage. So, pretty rare that, you know, you, you lose a team fight for all intents and purposes, and then. <laughs> it still goes back towards your way, just because they weren't actually able to convert anything off of it. They were forced to make those defensive movements back. That's where it could just spin TP. He's looking to try and take some of that farm away and not play out on the lanes. Yeah, the the tier one tower they got mid lane and those two pickoffs um, dropped the net worth lead. And then ever since then, they've kind of kept off. Like it was, I think it dropped it by like 2k. So I, I'm still lowering though. Like they're, they're doing a very good job. and. No, I honestly thought for them to be in this position, they had to continue feeding a couple of kills away, but they're not even losing that many lives to, to still be neck and neck with the, with the gold at the moment. 
Maybe I pick off off the back of this smoke though. This full on wrap around, I like it. They get a sense that this is where Lyle has been playing. It's just going to be Mafoshka that gets picked off though, as Lyle has the space to be able to TP away. You would assume he's going to be able to. Yeah, that's, that's still a tier two bot though. Yeah, that's true. I mean, at least it's a kill into a tier two, but they're the sacrificial deaths that you need to see out of the supports. Beautifully done. You know, popping the smoke. Lars able to react accordingly. Meanwhile, top tower is probably going to go down. Mira gets a little bit of farm, so he's almost got Shadow Blade. So really, Radiant are doing everything they need. Like, Lars even trying to cut mid as well, but what needs to be called for one 5k. Uh, I think they Actually, probably need thought, to. Lyle. It's a lasso, I'm not but sure he's got kill anchor, Ed. Yeah, No, you don't. The status resistance out of the Kyra and Sanj wins his lasso barely lasts, and now Munkushi leaps on from downtown. Um, the still will drop the wall, but there's going to be no value that comes out of it. Ankrad's not even done just yet. Driving, trying to target down some of the supports. Munkushi's ready to go. Is this a bit too deep, though? A charge by from Mira. Oh, God, I don't think there's anything they're going to be able to do to save. It's a pretty decent nice chain for us, though. Oh, it'll. How did fuck it? Yeah. They gotta oh. just push into this tier two tower. Like Gilgir might be dying here off the back of this. Got rid of the sticky though. That's important. Mira's gonna be forced to commit now. Yatoro is coming on over as well. Let's see what the Juggernaut's gonna be able to provide them for Spirit. Collapses up in ten seconds. Power defender by the looks of it. It is. I mean. This is what I really feel one move need to get out of this, you know? They need to make sure that they at least, at the very minimum, get the glyph popped here. Because then, if uh, another team fight goes their way, they can push into that bottom side with no real downside to it, right? Like, yes, you always need to be worried about the, uh, the Flaming Lasso drag back into base, but I feel like the net worth lead is enough that that's not necessarily going to be as much of a factor. What I don't want to see one move do is actually go for Roshan, because so many times we see people go for Roche, and especially if they're way too far ahead, but it oftentimes just gives the enemy team a chance to be able to put the lanes into a much better spot for themselves, so that you don't actually get immediate use out of it, and it actually would give Team Spirit a time to, for example, get Lyle into his BKB, or um, get the Spirit Breaker into, well, he's actually already got the Shadow Blades, so a mini timing has come through from Team Spirit right now off the back of this, gives him the Ion Shell, they want to try and find a pick off isolated away from the rest of the team. Love to get Ankarad with that six kill streak, but a lot of the vision protecting them for now. And some good mines placed down too by Techies. Smoke pops. Great position from Pantomim. He's still able to get the charge before the Glimmer Cape. It's a pretty big kill if they can get the Venomancer before some spells are casted. Might not get any bigger fish to fry though. They've still got that axe on the Quap though. Passed it on to every single one of them in that fight, so... Ton of damage pretty consistently. Oh. oh my lord. They're doing a good job of running away. I mean, Jug pushes top, Mira pushes bottom, Yonks away a few of his Lotuses. Nah, there's none. No damage being done to the bottom tier one. I was thinking maybe you can even put a little bit of threat onto that, but yeah, for mine, it just feels like they're not recognizing the potential that they have to be able to take this tier 2 mid and you know, go for a lot more of these pickoffs. It's just so much faster to be able to move across the map if you don't have to walk around a tower a lot of the time. They see Ankred sitting on his own underneath this observe ward in the mid lane. Maybe just a false sense of security for him because he's got that uh, that high ground ward for himself. But he's also got a shield rune to be able to play with. Smeary gets oh, no. lucky with a bash. <laughs> so... All right, if, uh, if one move, get this Harpoon on the Slark, and they get the Nullifier, both totally fine, right? Tons of value with picking up to pick those up. Again onto Pantom, and with the Lasso back, Chain Frost even used, so no hesitation. And now Mira's been able to isolate Gilgir as well if they want to try and go for the Techies, but the rest of the team's on the retreat. Mira's got no boys to play with, and, and it's going to be a one-for-one. One. Make space though. Yatoro, despite everything that's happened this game, still has not died a single time. Hasn't been involved in too many kills, but no deaths for the man, and he could just spin TP out every single time because of all the space being made. Doesn't even go all the way back to base. Wants to be as close as possible to the action so that he could just get back onto the map and farm. He's got the butterfly to be able to play around with as well. So what I was saying was uh, Munkushi, Harpoon, great, nullifier, great. I'm gonna need to see a basher after that because 
you know, it's reaching the point where the jug's been tipping away, cannot be allowed to happen anymore. You've got double leaps, you've got Harpoon to be able to catch up to him, you've got to be able to convert with the actual kill. Might be considering Roche. Maybe able to take it reasonably fast, but again, this is the the thing I was talking about, right? What will Team Spirit get in the meantime while you're spending all this time taking Roshan? Grouping up together on Team Spirit, potentially to defend this tower, maybe expecting that a movement would come towards where their Tormentor is because it's just before that 28 minute mark. Big wave right pushed in as well. While having to be a little bit careful, could have been stepping underneath the cliff, cliff vision, but I think with the amount of time that they've spent off the map, they know that Roshan's happening and it's just a matter of, well, let's get the farm on again. I'm really wanting McCrishy to play super aggressive. I mean, he's even got the Depth Shroud too, to be able to play around with, so, you know, could look to bait out an Omni Slash onto someone, he leaps in, drops that onto uh, the Omni target, and then immediately look to break it. Dyer are scanning. I guess the one thing for one move is their high, uh, high ground push is pretty weak. Yeah, but it's all one about thing. getting the pick off first. Yes, That's yes, really without a doubt. What I was going to be able to remove the Observer Ward at least. That, that's the reasoning behind the Basher as well, right? Like, you want to make sure that you're securing that kill. So the TP comes back as Yatoro once again. I mean, as long as they keep revealing that they don't have any of this actual lockdown for the Juggernaut, it's, it's a sacrifice for the Mirror. Well, that's a big one, though. A, a Hex on Afterlife. So maybe that could be the yep. initial stun into the follow-up, Yator. Still <laughs> looking to try and waste as much time as he possibly can. <sighs> that yours honestly threw me off for a second. I don't know if you saw that, but that <laughs> that worried me. I thought they, I thought they got him. Uh, they should be able to get the lanes in now. Bottom finally in. Mid's in a great position as well. We already see someone's trying to address top in Ankrad. And they're sweeping through Munkushi. This is a great ward as well. It's going to scout out Collapse. And Moposhka's up here as well. Ooh. I don't see him. Oh, I do. Dodge these guys? Poor Collapse. Even forced to drop the ward just to maybe help with the retreat. That pounce leash lasts for such a long time. So job has been done. Meanwhile, yeah, Moposhka cuts top lane as well. Uh, this is... This has been the past 10 minutes, maybe even longer, of gameplay for Spirit, so I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon unless they, unless a crazy fight breaks out where they get a couple of pickoffs on one move and can go high ground. Well, no, because they know that they've got much bigger timings coming, right? Like, you still need to make sure that you... Uh, wait, what's... Uh... Okay, Tim is not going into the Ags just yet, um, but Batrider nearly has Blink Dagger, actually does. So if they look to make a push now, maybe Team Spirit are going to change tact. Maybe they're going to say, you know what, let's not reveal the Batrider on the map. Let's let them take out Tier 2 Tower and then get a pull back inside the base onto a key target, blow them up because our lockdown is actually pretty decent. You know, we've got Lasso, we've got Vacuum, we've got, um, we've got Sinister Gaze, we've got Spirit Breaker and everything that he provides. And a Juggernaut that is still keeping up in net worth. I don't know how he's doing it. 2-0 and 2. Victoria is an absolute baller. You want to learn your farming patterns. This is the man to watch. Value your life. That's all it is. This... Understand what the what? enemy team has against you. Just be careful though, and you see that time around, he's much more proactive about the spin TP away because he recognized that the Cyber Vice was available. Maybe just anticipating that Afterlife wasn't quite in the position to be able to get the jump in onto it. But here we go. Four-man smoke. Bob not involved in it a lot more priority into shoving in that bottom lane. You just see Team Spirit go to the exact opposite side of the map. Not wanting to give them any freebies. The lane's not in a great space for them to be able to make any sort of pushes happen. And they ping out in the mid lane. They saw that the Dark Pact was used to be able to shove in it's... that lane. Oh, smoke's gonna pop. They've got the high ground board. Let's see the jump from Lala who wants to prioritize. I'm gonna try and find the lasso. A bit too far away though. Afterlife's gonna be able to react in time. Awkward now. We don't have that ward to play with on Team Spirit. The damage room for Ankrad as well. Our flaps. He's going to be the first one to jump. They've got the lasso. Combat up with the Ice Spire as well. Let's see if they're going to have it. Whoa! Oh! Sonic Wave! Ankrad, what is that damage? One team fight, and that's all they needed. One move. Slice and dice. 
Juggernaut's gone. Lyle's gonna try and TP up, but the Yules is there to stop him short. Oh my lord. They've been invading right. fight after we see fight it, for the past 20 damage. minutes. Predict the I damage. Radiance middle uh, like 11k? No, he did 8k, but it's still plenty. You know, you hit a five-man sonic wave into his, uh, his shadow strike, exploding onto everyone, plus the scream of pain on top of everything else with a ceremonial robe. With a Kyra and Sarge, and I mean, that's what they needed to be able to blow this game wide open. And not popping the glyph on that tier 2 tower, they still have it for this high ground push, but you got to say, without the Batrider available for that lasso back into base, without the Juggernaut there to be able to pop the Omni Slash for the kill, they could just stay up on this high ground. They've still got 10 seconds left of Aegis. No danger. They have to play around. Afterlife could maybe consider going into a, an Aghanim Shard for himself just to be able to assist with the push. Doesn't want anything to be able to uh, delay the the Aghanim Scepter for himself instead. Yeah. Not wanting to overstay their welcome. Again, whenever you're playing up against a Batrider, just don't give him an opportunity to be able to lasso you right back into the base. What a drop off. Top tower. I just, I, 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 we're saying it, like one fight is really all they need on one move. Fortunately, the death timers weren't even that long though. All they get is a T3 tower, but the net worth lead is really blown out of control. Got some nice big items Asher. out to work with. They did not get the, uh, the nullifier again on Slark. So they've gone into that. Timbersaw wanting to go the Ags. I mean, that's going to be a very important thing for Yataro to be able to dispel once it's picked up. It just does so much damage and provides him so much sustain in these fights. It, to me, it still is a story of who can they kill? Because you saw how much effort they tried to put into that uh, that Timbersaw, and it barely tickled him. You know, they popped everything. Big boy. Big boy, Arthur. 3,100. Health they got to go through. Titan Sliver as well is really the big one. Slark's the most killable one. I mean, he's the one you have to kill, I think. But Munkushi's almost never the one to go in first. It's always like... It almost feels like they're baiting Afterlife at this point. And, I mean, clearly they can. He hasn't died a single time. And he's incredibly beefy. And, I mean, once he gets the Aghanim Scepter, enough said. I feel like the game's almost over. A very split spirit. But Poshka's not there, nor you get Toro. Be a big open if they've got the vision. Collapse. Afterlife once again. It's gonna start on to collapse. They need the Dark City to be able to cast some spells for the search. Up to get some separation. They're gonna be able to repair some of the damage thanks to the healing ward as well. So Spirit, they'll stand strong. Not an easy fight though. Mine's getting laid down, Ward's getting laid down. How is Lar gonna be able to find the opening for the lasso drag back? Shrado strikes from afar as well, just keeping these lanes pushed away. Plus side, of course, is that you did get out the Noxious Plague from the Venomancer. No ultimates used on Team Spirit. I guess yeah, that's a worthwhile trade, heals. though. They they got the Wisdom Rune on, on one move, so I, I'd say you're probably pretty happy with the Plague used for that. Mm -hmm. What's he got? Ooh, a Remnant's Brooch coming out. What? The Quap. Yes, just wanting some damage to be able to go through the frost shield. He's yeah, huge, no man. Yet. I was thinking maybe a, a scythe of ice, you know, when I saw the the mystic staff and the quick buy for Anchorette, but Ooh. man knows best. He's not going to complain about to. a ten zero and nine co up, yeah. Oh, it's not only him that's flawless. You mentioned the timber before. Slark's is also flawless as well. All the cores on Dia yet to die this game. Seven deaths on the Venno, six deaths on the Techies. All worthwhile sacrifices. That's all right. Next to start. Nice search. It's rough, that's all I can say. <laughs> oh, it's... I don't even know what else to say. It's a... over rough. It's... What's the probability? That'll do it. 20%? Really? I'm finding that know. hard to believe. I mean, I feel like as long as you don't, like, 
dive in completely brainlessly on Slark or Quap, you it's almost impossible to lose this game. This is... They saw the Queen of Pain bottom. A bit of an opening. Oh, what a timing, though. Smoke pop and the ward drop down. So instantly he's going to go through the rift to be able to join the boys. And what could have been a window for a four on five. Now it means we've got a five on five for this second Roche. Pretty quick respawn as well. Well, actually, no, never mind. It's pretty long. But uh, the 40 seconds left on it. That's Revenant's Roche on the Corio. Oh, they're going to try and bring down Afterlife. Right, oh, it's applied and... Yeah, he's unkillable now. The brooch passed on by as well, so... They get neither. I'm just going to be watching Afterlife's HP when he pops the reactive armor. Like, it... It's insane. He is going to be the one first in every single time. You might be able to get, a, like, a quick CC onto him, but... They've got enough people to be able to support him from the back lines. Parvis, Solacrest, Glimmer Cape... Even the mech on the techies. He's got a greater healing lotus that he could just feed over to someone else. Just put Afterlife on the front, let him get off the reactive armor, and let him explode on everyone. They're gonna give it up, though. Dyer's Executive call to... Allow one lanes. move to get the second roast for free. And like you said, push out the lanes. Continue to find their farm. It's probably gonna be enough gold for you to get the Aghanim Scepter. But... Let's see if this Roche is going to be enough for them to go up high ground. So, I mean, we did speak about that. Dyer have some difficulties with doing that, but being this far ahead with second life might make it a bit easier. Gets them some neutral items. They take away the Wisdom Rune. They take away the uh, the Tier 1 Tower. Have to be a little careful now, especially that Slark has now. the Basher. Well, there's the Bash, and Yatora is going to try and TP out. No, no way. way. Butterfly. I think Mira's charged by it. Also knocked him away, and yeah, like you said, potentially the butterfly evasion. I didn't see, and Mira. No, oh, what? No, was that the Yules? I think he it was, was. No, he was Yules while he was running. That was so weird. Yeah, I, I. I let's see. I actually, don't know. I don't what know happened. If like Techies used I, Yules, but he was running while he was Yules. I saw the debuff on him. Yeah, me I, I don't know if the BKB expired and it still had like 0.1 second left on the Yules. Maybe. Uh, well, some, at least you know, Yatora lives. That's the big thing. Again, sacrificial death, Yatora's out. But now I, there's just zero math to play with. Bottom shoved in, mid shoved in. You already see Mokushi. He's, he's you know switched flashing waves here. just to be able to push him away. And he got him. I was going to try and play around with the BKB to get some separation. Oba Pounce is now off the mark. Even uses the ninja gear for that little bit of extra speed to be able to get away. He'll be able to. wonder if he even sticks around just to try and shove in that next wave. Gotta play really ballsy at this point. Has enough money for buyback if worse comes to worse for Lal. And he knows that one move want to be playing with this Aegis. They want to be getting the most value out of it as possible. As soon as the Slark especially reveals a way. Look at Lal. Look at how cheeky he's being. Just quick firefly. With the uh, the ninja gear being used, won't kill the entire wave, but at least it'll allow the see the uh, the creep wave to naturally push it in and force perhaps a defensive movement coming out of them. And what down, a frustrating! The way back. How annoying these games are to play, when the team's just uh, this has been th third mm, twenty five minutes of split push, avoid, yep. avoid, avoid. Just one team fight. That's all we got. One move bodied that team. It wasn't even close. And then they're like, ah, oh, yeah, we are. Uh, Back to split push we go. Yeah, we're not strong yet, guys. We know they're strong, but you know we can be strong too. Wait, say that again. They're strong, but we can be strong too. Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, Lal has enough to be able to buy the eggs if he wants. Of course, would uh, would provide that little bit of extra lockdown. Ooh, has to be careful with the positioning. One of the shortest blinks of the blink dagger I've ever seen as he tries to go for the run such a scary place to be in and yeah i i prefer this much more actually compared to the eggs i want to that instant hex that scythe of ice to be able to find i mean who can you even use it on like quap has kyra and sarge and she has the uh the lincoln sphere uh oh oh no bkb he's still probably gonna die yatoro so slash use so you want to play around with the omni slash now 
A little bit Smash. of danger. I mean, Gucci wants to try and bounce into the middle. Hex is at the Hex. ready as well. They're going to be able to precast it for stuff to get some separation. But now, Afterlife, he's charging him forward. You know, no hesitation with the four on five. They're ready to go for the finishing blow. Difficult though. And Kushi. Uh oh. Oh, just a swift slash. Okay, okay. Dragon Ball Z. In what lull. This is beast speed. So frustrating for one move. They're like, we've done everything perfectly. Why can't we just hit their high ground? That's just because Spirit aren't giving anything up for free. Oh, we got silence. It's the follow you, Tori. Still going to be able to react in time. Pretty aggressive blink in from Ain't Crab, but nothing they can do to penalize. And we can see the damage though. A couple of those slashes from Yatoro. Down to two thirds for the Slark to play with. They're really just trying to poke and do their best they can to act big and shove one move out of the base. And they've done their job. Do we have Mira back alive now? Got to be careful with some of these couriers. They've just gone over a couple of Venno Plague Wards. Uh, Darkseer has the Scythe of Ice picked up. Batrider went for the Aghanim Scepter instead, so if they can find that initial jump with the Scythe of Ice, maybe force someone to TP in response, then that's that Blink Lasso into the Omni Slash, into the Vac Wall Chain Frost. They need the perfect Wombo combo right now on Team Spirit. Oh, lol. He jumped on the lane, but they were sitting on the high ground. Unable to pop the BKB, BKB in time. Doesn't even need to. They're trying to bait things out. Well, Pantamon's actually going to be the one to jump in. They spy out Collapse. A pretty oh, decent that was a Lotus. Now with the chain, oh, it's tearing them apart. They forced off even closer as well. Multiple BKBs expended just to help the retreat. Thanks to the Lotus chain, Frost and Crad. Mira, I'm gonna continue. De these Lotuses have been devastating. Some of the fights we actually have seen. Once back to just lasso. Completely fire. prevents the lasso. Prevents the Omni Slash. Prevents the Spirit Breaker. Sort of chain Frost. Getting a buyback out of a Poshka that time. Does mean that the Aegis expires, and I guess Marl can look to remove some of these proximity mines if he knew they were there. They've also got a great Observer Ward on that high ground there, scouting at every little bit of movement. Just wanting to perhaps protect that Tormentor as much as possible. Have they got many Aghanim shards left to be able to claim? I mean, Jug, Bat, Darkseer, all three cores. I mean, you, you almost have to wonder, is this worth it? If they make the jump now. The, the first time that they've been able to find you outside of the base, but well, they actually get a little bit of a slow themselves with the uh, the surge buff. Yasuro hitting level 25, and it's all about that perfect Omni Slash still at the end of the day. Well, got two. Finally, double Just Lasso, supports. That's what they've been waiting for. War dropped as well, but the supports are still alive for the moment. Finally, they're going to go down, but Ain't Grad up to the high ground. Just pumps in the damage. Because still going to be cautious with the Omni Slash, though. Queen of Plane jumps out of the south, but Yatoru hasn't been able to lock onto his target. Mirror's going to try and do whatever she can. Dead. This is the fight we've been waiting for for Spirit. Yatoru once again with a swift shot back alive, but Afterlife pops the cheese, ready to go back in. But the Queen of Pain is not in fighting shape. It's just Afterlife against the two. So we're going to be cautious over the Blade of Fury. Still at the ready. we we'll use it defensively now. Oh, three for three. It looked disastrous, though, with the start they got. But, I mean, this Queen of Pain, if she's able to freely spell cast in fight, she's just doing so much damage. It was a really quick depth shroud coming through from the Slark to be able to interrupt the majority of that lasso as well. Uh, they got a quick swift slash through, but there wasn't that follow-up damage coming off after the fact. And... Well, they even killed Collapse a split second before he's able to get off that magic wand and a pipe. Maybe would have been able to survive long enough to, you know, get an additional surge off to provide Juggernaut the movement speed that he needed. But, I mean, yeah, he, we just saw Munkushi. He's not unkillable. That's his seven kill streak being given away. Still deathless on the timber and the quap, but we're really seeing the value out of these sides of ice. the effectiveness of the basher as well Yatoru, he's going into one of his own might need to eat the moon shard just to be able to have it oh really okay you do uh blessing Not any, uh blessing yep it's a probability no way i don't believe it's 35. <laughs> they know a ti winner is playing bro that's just crazy. 35? Alright. Dude, there's a Lincoln's on the Venno. 
All right, Pantomim. Well, maybe this will help a little bit with their sieging. Still, they're not... I mean, you can't do it now without the ages. But we've seen what the Lotus has been able to do. Potentially, the Lincolns prove to be even better inside some of these team fights. We, we got a, a sense of the power, though, that Spirit are able to provide if they can perfectly spell cast. It'll be perfect, though. It's gotten to the point where... You know, you've reached level 20 now on the Veno, so an extra 1.5% on the Noxious Plague is actually quite a lot. You know, 7.5% HP every second. <laughs> Most of the time, you think these long fights are going to to benefit the uh, the Juggernaut and the Batrider just off the back of the the Healing Ward and stuff like that, but... Oh, off the life. More. Thank you, boy. But the Lincoln's activated. They're going to get the last one, but again, the Lotus Orbs out, so unable to drag them back. An aggressive jump in from Aincrab, but the wall's gonna get laid down. It's looking really awkward for Spirit, though. What's the call? Fight or retreat? You stand here for the potential last fight. Mir wants to charge in. Nice. Mukushi avoids the hex as well with the dark pack. I don't know if they can fight now. Lasso wall down. It's a call, though. Up to you, Thor. They just don't want to give up Roshan for free. They know it's coming up in the next little bit. Mirror. But it could charge into two. Vacuum fob as well. Yator shreds apart one. Turns to kill gear next as well. Both supports down and out of the count. They don't have a buyback. The owner onto the slash as well. Chain. This time oh. the Omni slash. Yator is doing it. Bouncing back and forth. Critting through the members of one move. He needs to address Ankrad though. Push. Maybe that's where the bash is able to come into play. Yator against the world. They're going to try and buy back, but it might be too late. The damage has been dealt. Ankrad beyond good, like 16, 0, and 13. This man is unstoppable at this stage. 13,000 damage done in a single team fight by the Quop. Uh, yeah, just a, a cheeky 13 blinks used in the one fight. Just a 12 Shadow Strikes used in the one fight. Two uses out of the Scythe of Vice. I mean, we can't really underestimate what Timber did as well. 10k just off the back of his reactive armor plus everything else. And, I mean, that is even with the perfect use of the Nullifier coming through from Yatura. He instantly used it onto the Timber Saw as soon as he had that reactive armor pop so that he wouldn't have that extra survivability. But it still wasn't enough. I was thinking maybe Lyle was going to go outside the base to be able to pick up the, uh, the Bounty Room just to enable Yatura to respawn. But... It seems like they'll be able to do it, and Anchorite, he's hitting into the base. Are they gonna go for this? Yeah. Dude, these Lotus Torbs have just been breaking the fights for Spirit. It's just one they've got, right? Is it. No, they've got two actually. Gilgit and Afterlife. Okay. And the Lincolns Man. on the Venom. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Lincolns as well, but. I just. From, from what we're seeing, this is. M multiple fights now. We've, we've, we've seen this last year just completely have zero value thanks to Lotus and it's enabled the Quop to continue to reign supreme so high up in the net worth and level 30 as well for Ankrad. Uh, this is just what a crazy Queen of Pain performance. He's already eaten the eggs. Who do you even give this one over to? Uh, just give it to Venno? Sure. Yoink. Not a bad latent toxicity game either for Panto. I mean, if you have that spin TP, if you have that BKB to be able to get to quote unquote safety on the uh, on the Batrider, do they have any Lotus Orbs yet on Spirit? Doesn't Why, seem like it. Surely you just bought Shard right on Panto. Would that not have addressed your jug issue for like the majority of this game? A little bit, yeah. I mean, it's it's got such a small cast range though that. Now the Jug's got Swift Slash, it makes it a lot more challenging. Oh, well, well, collapse. Uh, Hang on, maybe Munkushi? Oh my lord, Glimmercade. They didn't have the vision down fast enough. Munkushi was able to react with the ultimate. But you see how much damage that Yator is able to do. Oh, the minefield. Let's okay. get out of it ASAP. Can Lyle find they that pick off? Finally, without the Lotus Sword, they've been able to get the drag back with the Depth Shroud. Subs to spell casting you Taurus gonna be able to drop kill gear thanks to the nullify, but it's not gonna matter because Ankrad just puts his body on the line. 4200 health they've got to go through for the Queen of Pain. They won't even try it, so Lasso wall used. Here comes the siege. Comes the siege with no creeps, unfortunately. So afterlife gonna be burning that flamethrower. Not too much added value, of course. Lich making it a little bit more challenging as well. 
Go for that big dive in on Mira. You big hit from the base. Oh. Uh -oh. I have to at this point. You gotta burn it. Fortunately, there's no real great use of the planar pocket for them this game. Anything that's gonna hit on one is gonna hit on everyone. Pretty much the only value is like for a Yule Scepter, which I'm probably using onto the Spirit Breaker anyway. Maybe the Scythe of Vice, maybe the Harpoon as well. Just Harpoon towards them instead, but. They still hold. 28% win prop, by the way. <laughs> No way, this something's broken. I don't know. This I refuse to believe it's 28%. So, uh, for Spirit, I don't know if we've seen it too much, but it's very difficult to coordinate because it's like a split second jump from Lowell. We haven't really seen like a lasso with the surge though. He's not getting enough distance away. The poker can never really put himself in a, in a position where he can force stuff that the bat rider as well. So maybe just have to pre-cast the surge. Maybe. Kushi, he's wanting to get into this uh, MKB before he even goes into Abyssal Blade, realizing how much of an issue Juggernaut's providing them. Oh my lord. Back to base, he goes there, so no Frost Shield. Better. Gonna pop the fortification, just wanting to keep this high ground advantage for as long as they can. Got the lasso available again, let's see Jesus, if Lyle can find it. Jesus, what? Again, the lack of detection, Minkushi react with the ultimate, pounces away, but now it forces Mirror to put himself in the front line. He's got the BKB to work with, so he's going to be able to play accordingly. He plays so finally much down, though. Wayne Crad? Just in for the finishing applause, the Poshka doesn't have the damage up with the last sword! First death! That's what they've been waiting for, first death of the game, and now Yatoru senses a sign of weakness. They're going to be cautious, because the buyback comes out instantly, Yatoru. Can he retreat? Can he reposition? Or get back to the safety of their base? It's a bit of a window now. There's a win condition. You kill Anchor out a second time. Game might start to get interesting with the jump in. Mikushi. Got to be cautious with the bash into the abyssal. Mikushi's gone. Yatori, he'll turn to Ankrad next, but they're not going to have the control. Nice reaction out of the blink, but still Mikushi's in fighting shape. Same with Ankrad. Hex is there. Can they keep Yatori alive? He doesn't have a buyback. And with that. Their hopes of taking this series in games should be done and dusted. They're still going to make one more attempt, but it's really been Yutori with all their damage inside these fights. This time you've got that lasso back into the tier 4 towers. I know he's doing a lot of your damage, but Mira just bought back. Run, 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 run. Ooh, I need to just wait for this last hour. You can't fight around where they're looking to set up with the minefield, with all those plague wards, with the vision as well. Somehow hold for the next minute. I'm not sure if going for this tier 4 push is the best idea. Afterlife, he's the one big himself on the front lines. Jesus, Mira. Getting another they're defensive wanting them to die. They're begging them. Alright. This time with the surge, can they get them inside the base though? Well, it's going to be laid down. A lot of damage on the Makushi. It's going to be enough to secure the kill he'll live. Oh, Sark gets out. Skin and bones will stay alive. Meanwhile, Maposhka, I mean, he's got a buyback at least, and so not the worst. 30 seconds, but towers are falling. No lasso is the more important thing. That's the only initiation that they had. Someone Dude, needs to put Ankrad. their life on the line. What? It, just a constant spam. Dagger after dagger, scream after scream. Ankra, take our freaking bow. What a Queen of Pain performance completely put the team on his back 19-1 and 15 out of the queen of pain it was a long grueling game two but finally one move we'll be able to get their victory 55 minutes in okay so we can't actually see it on the post gain but i've taken a bit of a screenshot of it myself <laughs> so the you know the the fight recap it shows the overall damage done uh, for that last fight, for one move, it was 87,000. And let's say, like, this is the size of Ankarad's damage bar. Everyone else's is like this. So he probably did about 70k damage in that last fight alone. What, what was so, his overall damage at the end no, of the No, no, don't look, don't look. I've, I've, let's okay. guess. Let's uh, guess. I reckon, like, I'm going to say 130,000. Okay. 130,000. I said 147. 143. 143. 
That's pretty good. <laughs> Second highest. This is the capability of the Quop. This is why I like this hero now, because you do not fall off. You get Holy. this freaking Aghanim Scepter after having a good start. I mean, to be fair, Team Spirit kind of put themselves in this position. They said, you know what, we're going to run this Batrider into the Quop lane. And we're going to run this dual melee lane into a Slark and a Venomancer. <laughs> and it didn't really work for them. You know, this is another time where they actually had the last pick, so they had the potential to flex things up if they really wanted to, but... Yeah, it felt like they just gave up a few too many of the, the really good matchups. You know, you and I both saw the Slark. Thankfully, they uh, they got rid of the Oracle, but it could have been even worse if they didn't. Yeah, I mean, what a performance to be able to come out on top still with those matchups. You still have to play accordingly. And we saw early on, regardless, they had this huge net worth lead. And uh, even in a loss, and I know I was praising them a lot through that game, still the fact that Spirit were able to make this game somewhat even and almost have avenues back in with just their overall team play with splitting up the map and for a long time Yutoro went flawless I mean this is just signs of an incredible team and of course I mean previous TI winners as well but in the end one move yeah, we, we saw what they're able to do and of course we've sung the praise from Ancrad in every series we've casted of these boys and it's another game where he's able to completely dominate and the boys were with him as well in that game I mean after I popped off on the Timbersaw he went flawless 6-0 and 16 just over Overall, from one move, a incredible showing in game two. And like we said, the stakes on the line. Spirit a win here. They go to Bali, a lose here for the boys on one move. Then they are playing tiebreakers for relegation, but they're not there just Bro, yet. One more win. How did Munkushi only do 23k damage that game? How is that possible on the Slark? He basically did as much did as the, the Lich on the other team. But I mean, okay, Agcrab was doing it all. They were all dead before he could even right click them a couple of times. That must be it. But uh, yeah, what a great performance coming through from one move. And you know, you asked me about it and I did say we were going to a game three. It wouldn't be a Team Spirit series without a game three. I'm really excited to see how it's going to pan out. Can they make it to Bali or one move save themselves from relegation? We'll find out. We've got to go to a quick break first. Be back shortly.